everyone, and welcome to another episode of Don't Wait Till Pigs Fly, a podcast conversation with successful business owners who share their secrets of thriving in business while living with chronic illness. Here's Nancy Becker. Today we are talking with Nisha Fair, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what she has to say and seeing how it applies to the things that we talk about on this podcast all the time. So welcome, Nisha. Glad to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and why you're passionate about it. Hmm. Uh, well, thank you very much for having me on the show. It's a real treat to be here. Uh, so I'm an embodiment researcher and coach. Um, loosely translated, that means that I teach people how to inhabit their bodies with more comfort and ease. Nervous system regulation is really the bedrock of a lot of what I do. And lately, I've been specializing in the field of pleasure work and supporting women who... Uh, feel cut off from themselves, from their bodies, from themselves as sexual beings, either because they identify as being highly sensitive or because they've had trauma. And I am passionate about this work because, because I see the growth that happens in the women that I work with. Um, I should say the, while my area does touch on you know, sexual health and well-being, 90% of what I do with clients is non-sexual and supporting people who've lost the um, uh, the ability to know pleasure in their day-to-day -day waking, living life, not just in the bedroom, and learning how to reawaken our nervous system pathways that allow us to live a more comfortable and more pleasurable life. So um, it's, uh, the transformations are so subtle, but just remarkably profound. And I just, I feel very called to support people to feel better in their bodies because so many forces in the world are trying to make us feel worse yeah, every day. Absolutely. absolutely. And there's so many things that pop up in my mind as I listen to you talk. And I'm sure you know that my podcast and myself, I'm very open with what's what goes on in my life is that I'm all about working with women business owners who have lost something mm -hmm. in their bodies and they are trying to still run their businesses they're trying to be everything that they were prior to you know, uh, an illness or an accident or something like that. And it just doesn't happen. Mm. And for many of us, myself included, we think we're not going to let this get the better of us. You know, we're, we're going to just continue the way we always did. And then we wind up with our businesses collapsing, our relationships collapsing, mm. And our world just in chaos. It doesn't matter that, that we're in the middle of a chaotic environment outside ourselves. We're creating our own chaos inside. Mm -hmm. And I so want these women to be able to look at themselves differently and say, it's okay. How do you talk to these women who still have the idea that I'm just going to push on through regardless. Um, so it's a two pronged approach that like push on through regardless is it's kind of a trauma response at that, like, you know, narrow, not narrow focus, but when, when we're activated, when we're in stressful situations, we do close ourselves off from life and it's just like, get through, get through, get through, just do whatever you can to just make it happen. And there are two things I think that, so let me go back to I'm like being really inspired by your question. So <laughs> it's a good one. Um, so the two pronged approach is first to work on nervous system regulation, because the minute we work on nervous system regulation, that urgency to propel ourselves forward at whatever cost goes away. 
and we can just be with ourselves and be more in touch with the truth of our situations. And, and really it leads to so much more like self-acceptance and compassion. And when we have self-compassion and self-trust, it's so much easier to move through our lives in ways that are authentic to how our bodies are, how our relationships are and how we relate to the world. So that's my first sort of approach to always go with the body because it controls so much more than you think it does. I really, I'm big on like, you know, as many birds with just one stone. <laughs> so I go after the, the, the root whenever possible. And then the other piece is supporting. So I've had two very serious traumatic brain injuries. And um, in both cases, I did this completely naturally. I didn't, didn't know what I that I was doing this, but I kind of just left behind my life that I'd had prior to my injury. And what I didn't realize was that it was a very intelligent thing to do because I had a completely different brain. My brain had been changed by these injuries. And so I sensibly had a different life, different person, what have you. And so that's part of the other piece, I suppose, that I, I work with people to, to come into acceptance of the fact that what's happened is it's horrible and it's hard and it hurts, but it can be an upgrade if you can see it as like you have a whole new life that you can live and a whole new like range of possibilities that are open to you. And so um, when we can kind of like between the nervous system regulation piece and then just clearing the skies a little bit, it's just, it's amazing what opens up. So. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I think, um, I've been doing this uh, for over 35 years, but I've only really been, and I've had um, disabilities and chronic illnesses and autoimmune conditions for probably about 20. Um, mm. But the one that really got me was six and a half years ago when I was in the car accident. And that changed everything for me. Walking two miles a day, traveling to stand for hours in front of audiences and talking mm. to them, to being in a wheelchair. And not being able to do anything without my husband taking me and guiding me. And, you know, and for a long time, I just sat in a ball and said, I just don't want to be here, mm -hmm. you know. And then, thankfully, I started to come out of it. I'm, I'm too much of a business geek to sit there forever, yeah. you know. And I've, and I've pushed and I've shoved and I've gotten myself back up into uh, being more of the person I was, but you're right. It's an entirely different life and you need to figure out how do you maintain what you're doing, what you have wanted to do, what you've created. How do you maintain that and continue to keep it thriving and successful by doing it differently? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I, so many women that say, oh yeah, I have whatever, whatever, but I'm not telling anybody about that. And I'm ignoring it because I just, I just want to keep on going. And I think that is really harmful. It's mm -hmm. harmful for themselves. It's harmful for their businesses. How do you get them to understand that it's okay that they have a different life, that, that it can be um, a good thing, and that if they figure out what to do, they can have so much of a better life than they had before. Mm -hmm. That's, you have such great questions. I love, love, love good questions. Thank you. See, this is why I said we just go with the flow. <laughs> I love it. I love it. There's two things. I think that, you know, we are wired for survival and part of that go, go, go and, you know, hide your weaknesses is a survivalist protective um, mechanism. I think, you know, what I, I try to lead by example. I try to be, I mean, I don't talk about my history every single day, but I do make a point of uh, bringing that forward so that I can prove to anybody who's watching that there is more safety on the other side of fear, that there's more safety in me being, in me standing up and saying, I'm a survivor. I've been through all of these horrible things and uh, look at nothing bad happened to me. No one attacked me. I didn't die. In fact, I'm thriving now by 
being out and open as as myself and as the person who's bringing this work to others so that so that they can find a similar journey and so I think it's tricky because I think everyone has their own path and their own process and so I really just try to support people to find out what that is for themselves you know and I want to I do want to just kind of put a little asterisk on asterisk on uh, um, what I've said in terms of the upgrade and I it's easy for me you know seven and 14 years after my two TBIs and years after all of my histories to say oh this was an upgrade <laughs> but when you're in it I just I want to acknowledge that like hearing that can can feel difficult and and I completely understand how because there's so much rah 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 around mindset and just change your thoughts and you can change your life I find a lot of that can be really re-traumatizing for people and demoralizing and so what I do is not that and I don't support that for for a lot of my clients because it can be really damaging and can actually like set them back a while so um in terms of how how do I support people to take those steps it's it's really baby steps and and really tuning into safety I think that's probably the biggest um the biggest piece of what I do is so in our lives we have experiences and our embodied definitions of what's safe and good and healthy and nourishing can become corrupted either by you know toxic bosses or difficult experiences in relationships or just life in general um you know especially if uh we have a history of uh, oppression or any kind of issues around social justice that may have impacted our lives and so i just lost my train of thought now <laughs> our embodied definitions of safety can become corrupted. And so what a lot of what I'm doing in my work is helping to reestablish what those embodied definitions are and give them true definitions of safety. So when I, so because of, I, just to give you a personal example, when I was growing up, I grew up in a very turbulent, um, abusive home. And my definitions of what safe and good were for relationships we're not safe and good, right? Yeah. So I had to re-educate my body to learn to recognize signs and signals in other people based on what was a true and actual uh, definition of safety. So I find that once we engage in that process, people, they just kind of do it for themselves. It just, it kind of naturally happens because I work a lot with parasympathetic nervous system repatterning is what I call it. So supporting people to live a lifestyle that is really rooted in, in parasympathetic ground and using that as a guidepost for all decision-making in relationships and work or what have you. So if the thing makes me feel in any way activated, then I know that it's not going to give me more of what I want. So it's a... Uh, stop for a second and yeah. back up for a minute. Explain what you mean by parasympathetic people may not sure. know. Yes. Thank is. you. So our human nervous system has, I'm going to get just really simplify it. Many people hear about fight flight. Mm -hmm. Fight flight is um, associated with, and it's actually fight flight, freeze and fawn. There are four nervous system responses when we get activated in uh, the, what's called the sympathetic side of the nervous system parasympathetic is the part of our nervous system that's responsible for things like immunity very important in these times yes. <laughs> fertility rest digestion so um we often see in people who have anxiety there are also gut issues because we're not getting to digest our food because we're not in <laughs> yeah and it's like it's so common because even like a little bit of little bit of activation, which prior to the pandemic, I believe everyone was pretty much chronically activated, overworked, and not getting enough time in these like deep rest states. And the pandemic's just thrown everything um, into overdrive. Mm -hmm. So it's the, to simplify, it's the sort of fight, flight versus rest and digest modes of our nervous system. So if you think about having the nervous system having two modes and we can't be in both modes at the same time 
we have to choose one or the other and learning how to move our bodies into parasympathetic drive or ground, pardon me, is a skill that can be taught. And it's something that eventually I, I teach people to just initiate on command. So Very interesting. Well, yeah. and I know I, I've got a perfect example in myself. Every time I get upset, every time I have a deep emotion for mm-hmm. something that's going on, I head right for the bathroom. I, you know, I'm throwing up, I'm having mm-hmm. stomach issues. I mean, and my husband says, all right, what are you upset about today? So we even know that this yeah. is what's going on, but understanding what's going on in actually changing that, my goodness, I would like to be able to change that. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, so what I what I work towards personally and professionally is really guiding people to understand their embodied sensations and uh, felt senses as they're climbing up to that point of overwhelm so that they never actually reach the point of overwhelm that we like cut it off before it gets to that point. So instead of just, you know, maybe doing a yoga class every few days I'm guiding my students to like every half an hour, every hour, do something that pulls you back down into parasympathetic ground so that you're always coming back there which consistently regularly throughout the day instead of like waiting till that point where you're just like, oh, I'm going to crack and then doing something. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's really, it's deceptively simple, but it, it really works. And it's a way of, um, it's really just, it's self-regulation, just regulating, uh, our our body's responses to environmental content you know because we're constantly constantly processing things through our senses and when and i think we're constantly in overwhelm right now 100 percent. and just in waking up and getting out of bed in the morning these days or you know i have gotten to the point my husband lives, eats, and breathes the news. He's got wow. bings and bangs and bongs going off on his phone constantly with news reports coming in. That's the field he's in. That's what he does for a living. But then he tries to tell me about it. And he says, did you read or did you hear about it? I said, no, and I don't want to. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. you know, I don't want totally. anything to do with... I've got enough on my plate as it is. I don't want to know what's going on, which I think is also not necessarily a good thing. We do need to know what's going on in the world around us. But um, but then you add in, here's a woman who, you know, let's say my, my ideal client, it's a woman who has who's in her 40s or 50s, you know, has been a successful business owner for 10, 20 years, knows what it means to have a successful business, and then was in a car accident or had, you know, a TBI or uh, something happened. They've now gotten fibro. They've, you know, whatever. They are getting migraines. They have an issue that has come into their lives that has totally thrown everything out of whack Mm -hmm. talk about chaos you know Um, absolutely so (laughs) one of the things I tell my clients is and I don't know tell me if I'm wrong or not but when you wake up in the morning take 10 minutes to count your blessings to kind of breathe to feel the oxygen going through your body I usually feel it going in through my head and out my toes you know and and looking at the good things that happened the day before uh, the things that I want to happen today and how I'm going to have them happen but I also give myself permission to if something doesn't happen to say that's okay Absolutely. I love that. It's so beautiful. And uh, I, I fully agree. I think that's, that's an amazing tool or way to start the day. I 
I have a similar one that I suggest don't get out of bed until your body, you feel your body has been, is fallen down into parasympathetic ground that you feel relaxed and safe and warm and held in your, in your body and in the world. And growing a successful business is hard enough, but trying to do it while adjusting to a new challenge, like a chronic illness can definitely derail the best of us. Nancy understands she has been there, done that. With 30 years of success, she knows the necessary business hacks to increase your income and relieve the day-to-day stress of running a business, all while living in an uncooperative body. Nancy can help you. Connect with her today through the links in the show notes so you can see your business soar higher. Back over to Nisha and going to lead us for a couple of minutes in some guided meditations so that that's a great way to end this conversation. And Nisha, take it away. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. Um, so these are, they probably feel like meditations for, for a lot of folks. It is sort of embodied awareness exercises. I I don't love to use the term meditation just because it feels it can be prohibited for some people and it doesn't always support us to connect to our bodies. So anyway, that's, that's just me being technical. So what do you call it? I, I miss. <laughs> so I call it. No, no, that's okay. It's called, so uh, just embodied awareness exercises. It's just an opportunity to connect with and use those sort of secrets of our nervous systems to support us to find some, some ground. So one that I really love is all around our vestibular system is the bones of our inner ear, the bones and canals of our inner ear. And when we're activated in fight or flight, fawn or freeze, they kind of pull up and back and we get a lot of tension around our heads or ears. We get a lot of jaw clenching. So really amazing thing to do is to just drop your jaw, let it hang and just sort of let it move back and forth, right and left, really gently. And you can release your tongue completely out of your mouth. Really, really soft and heavy. And if you like, you can even tuck it between your front lip and your teeth. And it'll mean that you sound like this when you talk, <laughs> which is funny, which is also really nice and regulating for your nervous system. And then what you can do is just sort of allow the weight of your head to fall right and left as you're holding your tongue there. And you don't want to sort of move it in any, um, how shall I say, really allow the weight of gravity to sort of act on your head and sort of pull it down towards your shoulders right and left. So it doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't have to look like yoga just allowing gravity to act on your head as you move right and left and you can pub forward and back. And that's a really nice one because you can do it in a chair. You can do it in a car. Um, the little tongue tuck I use all the time. Anytime um, I struggle with sleep and if I wake up in the middle of the night, and I can't get back to sleep. I'll just pop my tongue in between my front lip and uh, I just nod right back off to sleep because it really supports my nervous system to, to settle so those are um, those are a couple of really good yeah, tips that's, that are that's interesting. I will try that one hmm. because yeah, I have a horrible a time sleeping. <laughs> oh yeah, it's tricky. It is. Yeah, yeah. So and you know, in that we we don't often realize what things cause us to have other issues. Yeah, you know? and a lack of sleep. If you're tired and exhausted, you're not going to be your best person. No. You're not going to make good decisions. You're going to be grumpy and grouchy and, you know, all those kinds of things. And so just if you can, and if I take a sleeping pill or I take something that's going to make me sleep, then I wake up the next morning and I'm, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and that doesn't help anything either. So it's, it's nice to have some natural things that you can use. A hundred percent. And there is just, I want to follow on what you're saying at that point. I, um, and I wanted to mention it when you were talking about your 
husband and uh, the idea of so much coming in. And I think when we've had a nervous system injury or a serious, you know, diagnosis or a big change to our lives that forces life to become chaotic and changes it uh, unrecognizably, our bodies are taking in more information and new information. We are literally processing more than the average person. And it's a privilege to have a nervous system and a body that functions as it ought to, right? And so I think, you know, to your point, really just coming into a place of allowing things to not be perfect and to knowing that like, it's okay if it doesn't go right today is so important to just not be so hard on ourselves because I still, I have days all the time where things do not go as planned and I am not my best best self for whatever reason. And all we can do is just keep trying and letting those days be a reminder of the person that we want to become. That's wonderful. And I, and I think that's really a, a good place to end this interview because it's, it's a positive, it's okay. You know, yeah. we, we are not perfect. Get rid of perfectionism and just be happy with where you're at. Yeah, 100%. I think that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank this you, has Nancy. Been a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Is there Enjoyed anything well. that we didn't talk about that you just have to say before we get oh, on? Well, um, if anything that I've been talking about is of interest to folks, I have a an eight week embodiment coaching course starting on December 15th. And uh, I'm sure you'll put my website in the show notes, maybe. And so we can put that, uh, have that link up. And uh, it's all around learning how to embody or pardon me, inhabit our bodies with more pleasure and comfort. It's the whole point starting off 2021 feeling good. That sounds like a plan to me. Guys, yeah, right? check it out. The website's in the show notes. And I'm certainly going to check into it because I am looking forward to having a wonderful 2021. Mm-hmm. And I think we all are. We are tired of this life we're living and we need to make the best life that we can regardless of what's around us. So check it out and listen to this podcast. There are lots more really good episodes out there. If there's something that you want to hear about, let me know and I will get some information and do a show on that topic. And until we meet again, guys, get out there, be productive and soar higher. Take care, y'all, and we'll talk again soon.